my life took a pretty big turn when i changed my school all of a sudden um, you know i became a good student i don't know how that happened but i started studying more and stuff like that happened because i used to play a lot of cricket when i was a kid and it came to a point i was playing under 14 bengal which is like a big deal that time it was oh. a big deal in my head at least and uh, we used to play 80 overs games so 80 overs games means what it is a two day commitment one day you will be bowling one day you will be batting and it used to happen on the weekdays because weekends were reserved for bigger games so two days of weekdays means two days of school banking so that's why my you know academics went for the toss and then i stopped playing cricket because i realized i don't have a future i can't devote so much time on i became a better student i joined st xavier's college and of course xavier's the level of sports is very high they have sports quota they have 7000 plus people oh. so it's very difficult to crack into the main team so i somehow managed in the cricket and football team but i was always a decent player i was never amongst the best players there no rain hello and welcome to the narain agarwal show folks at today's episode is going to be one if you are athletic if you like sports and if you like sports marketing you got to listen to this whole episode i got with me my dear friend cheerful guy mr parag agarwal parag is a sports marketing professional with an mba in brand management and also has a bachelor's in finance so what is cool is he understands sports he's a passionate sports person himself at the same time he's a marketing professional and understands the business side of it and i want to ask him questions on how to combine both and how this all this work so welcome to the show parag thanks thanks for the intro narin i mean uh, ecstatic to be here i'm really looking forward to a uh... Extreme. Bro, what's up with the long hair? You look so cool in the long hair, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all this while when I was in college, I was never allowed to grow my hair because they said it doesn't look professional. But yeah. I've been working for the last three years, and nobody ever had an issue with that. So I just thought, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a good time. To grow my hair. <laughs> That's so funny, bro. Colleges are so outdated sometimes. You know, they don't want you to grow the hair, but when you actually go into the business world, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So I mean, that's that's really interesting. You know how it works here in India. So yeah, <laughs> I haven't been a cricket since. <laughs> awesome, Parag. Uh, you went to Mica, which is one of the nice Indian MBA colleges and really known for its marketing and advertisement and media, right? Why do you think like your college produces such? um great professionals in the marketing media and uh, advertisement agency and area so the culture in college is very different so for example in india you must have not heard of coed hostels for example or graffitis in college walls or things like that like it's a norm there so there basically you have the ability to do whatever you want okay they also have like courses like sports marketing that's why i joined mica also and they have coed hostels and you know the campus is open 24/7 you can play sports at 3 o'clock at night and stuff I've like that i've never heard of coed hostels in india at all exactly and even the entrance exam is very different from other b schools so for example if you go to any of the iim colleges or any of the top b schools they will ask you for a cat results right but in mica they have a different entrance criteria there's something called a mycat exam which also involves a lot of you know creative writing and creative thinking and uh, those kind of things so i mean it's very different from other b schools and that's the selection criteria i was very Two in my like I performed really badly in my CAT exams. I got eighty percentile, which was way lesser than what you need for a good B school. But uh, they didn't care really in my CAT. I wow, it it sounds like it's a very different approach to uh, being in business school. It's not just the uh, typical engineer going there, but it's probably also thinkers and people who are creative allowed to go in, right? Exactly, exactly. I mean that's what they really embrace there. I never knew about this. It's kind of reassuring to hear that schools like this exist in India because I had a very specific impression of B schools, which has always kept me away from B schools. Like my whole family wants me to go to B school, and I'm like, no, I'm I'm not made for B school. So, in fact, it's actually it was branded as not exactly a B school but a C school, like a communication school. And I, all our alums, like they are in agencies, and that's because they come from a culture like this. Like maybe the. uh ceo of ogilvy inter right now is a alum leo bonnet ceo is an alum so all the agency people like you see a lot of micans there because it really embraces creative people there but i, um, I want to ask you a little bit you've always been into sports right uh, in school you were into sports in college uh, what has been your journey with sports in school like what sport do you play and why have you always been so much into sports so okay we have to go back in time for me to answer this question go back so in time I, <laughs> back in time so just to give you a context i was always a very poor student okay like before before heritage before dps i was a very very poor student i used to somehow manage to pass every year my exam my parents used to go to school and plead that please my son is going to do better next year so please give him chance and stuff and 
what happened in that school was that you know because i was a backbencher i was never a good student i was sort of losing my identity i didn't really know what i was really good at because you know you're just one of the many people in the classrooms and my class teacher didn't even know my name that time just to give you an instance okay and then i was very much inclined towards cricket and football that time i used to play those sports and i was fairly good at it i was never the best but i was better than most okay and then used to have this inter class and inter house and intersection kind of things and all of a sudden you become a star like for half an hour people want to know who is this guy is playing so well and people, <laughs> 20 30 people are cheering for you yeah that's when you realize okay boss you have you have a presence like you know so sports gave me that like of course ah. apart from things people talk about uh, talk about they talk about perseverance never die i do working hard and stuff like that that's obviously that team spirit and stuff but for me it was more about uh, you know finding my identity via sports so that's when i realized that boss i can't become a professional sports player for sure i'm not that good but i want to really do things to promote sport as a as a thing in india so that's when i realized i will work in sports for sure i gave it. you a recognition that you didn't have and so you became passionate about it exactly exactly it stuck with you all through school right so you kept playing cricket and football yeah uh, not just cricket and football in fact uh, when i went to dps when i changed my school after my disastrous class 6 results i got 25% that year uh, i changed <laughs> my school. and uh, that's when i started exploring more sports i started playing racket sports i started uh, getting myself involved in you know athletics and i mean it doesn't even matter which sport you're playing just the idea of playing sports excites me so much uh, is why i'm like so inclined towards it wow that's amazing um i know you were recognized in your college like can you can you speak about that in your college which is one of the premier institutes in india for the bcom degree hmm. uh, you were so, recognized for sports yeah so i mean uh, my life took a pretty big turn when i changed my school all of a sudden um you know i became a good student i don't know how that happened but i started studying more and stuff like that happened because i used to play a lot of cricket when i was a kid and it came to a point i was playing under 14 bengal which is like a big deal that time it was oh. a big deal in my head at least and uh, we used to play 80 overs games so 80 overs games means what it is a two day commitment one day you'll be bowling one day you'll be batting and it used to happen on the weekdays because weekends were reserved for bigger games so two days of weekdays means two days of school bunking so that's why my you know academics went for the toss and then i stopped playing cricket because i realized i don't have a future i can't do it so much time on it i became a better student i joined st xavier's college and of course xavier's the level of sports is very high they have sports quota they have 7000 plus people oh. so it's very difficult to crack into the main team so i somehow managed in the cricket and football team but i was always a decent player i was never amongst the best players there uh, but what i got an opportunity was uh, i was really involved in managing sports events organizing sports events doing thing for sports fest sports colleges sports marketing stuff i won a couple of uh, sports marketing fests in different colleges uh, and i was recognized with this award uh, it's called outstanding contribution to sports in xavier's so i mean that was the biggest take away not just playing sports but that's when i realized that you know okay i'm getting some recognition for doing things in sports i want to make this my career wow so you already started like kind of got the flavor of sports marketing in college while being a player and while being a um, student who is passionate about sports but implementing that and promoting it to the others exactly yes and then you had college and then you go on okay this is this is what i where i want to like zoom in and talk more about you go on to join decathlon now folks who are listening to this decathlon and you don't know is is a french company correct me if i'm wrong and they've just come into india and it seems like boom everybody is talking about decathlon it's just skyrocketed especially since the past 3 4 years there's stores all over everybody wants to go to decathlon everybody is talking about sports the bikes are sold out during corona in decathlon like what is this whole all of a sudden boom of decathlon in india and you joined them about 3 3 and a half years ago yeah i mean i think decathlon managed to identify that blue ocean in india uh, a space where nobody was there at the beginning right yeah. so i mean if you want say football boots you probably go to nike if you want a cricket bat you will go to sg but there is no one sports store where you can just explore sports like when i was a kid i really wanted to see all the sports equipments that i used to see during olympics maybe for example right you see all different kind of sports badminton tennis squash cycling football everything so that's what decathlon has done really well 
they have put everything into one bucket and they have you know catered store out of it and they are very unorthodox in their marketing so traditionally decathlon is not a very marketing centric company you will not see a lot of decathlon television commercials or newspaper ads because they believe that marketing expenses you know are a big chunk of a company spend and they don't spend money on that what they rather do is they spend money on research and development given that experience inside the store and reducing the cost of the products so pretty much if you see a different brand they have the same material if you go into the you know the manufacturing process and stuff it is pretty much the same say decathlon xyz top brand but the price would be significantly different it would be like a contrast like a 100 rupees and a 300 rupees so i think that's what decathlon has been trying to do and has been fairly good at it so far yeah i mean when i went to the first store that i experienced that was in the city of bangalore it was so cool i had never been to a store in india a sports store which had all sports there and there was literally a basketball like hoop there where people were shooting the in store experience is so fantastic anybody will go in and end up buying something or the other you might not use it after you come out but at least it is inspired to buy something and get interested in the sports exactly so the idea is also to promote these sports to people so the lot of sports people don't know about in india so for example a A, a kid in India right now would probably know about cricket, football, basketball, and a couple of other mainstream sports. But if I ask you about kayaking or snorkeling or maybe uh, skateboarding or stand-up paddle and trekking and things like that, you probably won't have much idea. And that's what Decathlon is trying to do. It's a European culture, but they're trying to bring that thing in India. And it's a very good way to expose people to these unorthodox sports. And the only way you can do that is you know giving that experience where people can actually try it out and see the products right in front of their eyes. Wow. So I want to ask you. Uh, you joined the Catalan about three, three and a half years ago, and you've had a great spree with them. Just about to be over. Um, how did you get into the Catalan? Was it challenging to get into uh, this company? Um, how did that happen? And you ended up being in the area that you want to sports marketing. A lot of people they have to compromise. Did you decide not to compromise and go into something that you were really passionate about? How did that pan out? Oh man, that's a big story, and that actually involves a big compromise as well. Okay. So uh, when I was in my car, I was interning in a in an advertisement agency as a sports marketing intern. So I was working on multiple projects, Pro Kabaddi League team. I was working with them for three months, and then there was a time of the final placements when I was in my second year, and I was expecting a few sports companies to come for recruitment, and that's how traditionally placement happens in these schools in India. Like you know, companies come to campus and they recruit you, and uh, traditionally sports companies had been coming to campus, but they've been coming towards the end because of course they can't. Uh, you know, give you a salary of an Amazon or a Google. It's going to be lesser, but it's going to be more interesting, maybe. So I was waiting for them to come, like a couple of sports companies, but they didn't show up. And uh, what happened was that I was left hanging. I was the only guy left in my batch who was unplaced for three weeks, and I was under too much pressure because everybody in your college is like, get, get placed, get placed. You know, the, you're the only guy left in your batch. The placement committee, the placement coordinator, everybody's putting that pressure. and then i got fed up what i did was so there was a decathlon store close to my college in ahmedabad okay they <laughs> used to purchase sports products from so i just went to that store and i said that boss uh, like the store manager i went up to him i said uh, i want to join your company uh, what can i do so he's like uh, you want to join the store i was like yeah i want to join decathlon i'm a big fan of decathlon i have played a lot of sports in decathlon turfs as well and i would love to be a part of your organization Like are you sure? Like hundred percent? Like okay, fine. Come for the interview and the decathlon recruitment day. So just to digress a little bit, there's something called a decathlon recruitment day. So what happens in this form of recruitment is that they make you play sports. Okay, the idea is not to judge whether you're a good footballer, or good cricketer or not. The idea is how you are on the field. Are you a good leader? How's your communication skills? Are you a team player? Wow. Anything like that. So in a lot of companies, you see they have group discussions, group exercise. So this is their way of you know filtering. They make this awesome. Yeah. So I was made to play frisbee, which is again not a very popular sport. Not to see if I can play the sport well or not, but how am I in a team? So I got through that interview round and the recruitment round. and i joined the store team i was in the store for five and a half months i was serving the customers inside the store on the weekends as well we used to work inside the store obviously oh. uh, and then i got a call from the back office and they said that you have been doing a fairly good job so we want you to come and do the direct marketing project would you be interested i was like why not i would love to because i have a background in that and doing that for decathlon is a is wow a so they call you to for direct marketing now before you continue the story i want to ask you and break this real quick because you were getting this pressure of being placed 3 weeks you said i'm just going to go into the store ask them now uh, 
I want to I want you to be honest. At that point, other students are probably getting very prestigious and high paying jobs, right? They're getting like jobs in Amazon, yeah. uh, Fevicol, whatever, like these big companies. And then you decide to take up a job of being an in store uh, attendant after an MBA, which is a very untraditional, right? What What did everybody say about it? How did you feel about it? Why did you go through that? So you know what I realized, like I've always had this fear of being judged and stuff like that. But when it came to this, when it came to sports. I realized I don't care. Like I'll do because my parents were supporting me. They said you can do whatever you want. You just like you have to find the way. Awesome, bro. So yeah. I didn't really care about anyone, but it was tricky. Why? Because the store was still very close to my college, right? And my juniors, who are now in second year, they knew me. Okay, they used to come to store, and I used to serve them. So it was tricky for the first couple of weeks, but then after a point of time, I was so happy doing what I was doing. I was like really, you know. helping out the people in the store and telling them which sport they can explore and how they can play it and stuff like that organizing events in Ahmedabad circuit for sports it was so much fun like i genuinely didn't care after a point of time wow. and after 5 and a half months i was anyway in the back office doing more of a white collar job at this so wow okay that's amazing guys 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 if you're checking this out listen to this let go of the fear of judgment for after his mba from one of the top marketing mba schools in india just goes into the store and decides to uh, be an in store attendant because he loves sports so much wow i'm impressed i didn't i didn't know about this bro this is awesome so then okay we go into uh, the back office so they call you after 5 6 months you go to the back office and what's the back office like what is direct marketing and you have a very small marketing team right like when you joined there was about how many people So again, it doesn't like in Decathlon. We don't have marketing as a profile as such. Right, yeah. It's just people who take your different verticals in marketing. Yeah. So one person is working on maybe digital ads, SEOs. One person is working on uh, outdoor advertisements. One person is working on uh, Google Shopping. So I was working on direct marketing. So direct marketing is basically what. So whenever you go to Decathlon, you will see people. Uh, you know uh, that we have database of people, right? You'll be having phone numbers for whatever reasons. So basically, what my job profile asked me to do was to, you know, bucket these customers on the basis of their sports affinity. So, for example, if somebody comes to Decathlon, is buying ten different sports products. Okay, one of those ten different sports products, six products are from trekking. Okay, and four products are from four different sports. So I will identify that person as a trekking customer. Okay, like this person has a very high affinity towards trekking as a sport. Now, further into trekking. I try to understand whether you're a beginner trekker, intermediate trekker, expert trekker, depending on what kind of things you have purchased. So there are two core people or whatever. A lot of people like this, okay, close and close of people like this. So you try to bucket them and you create campaigns for each of these buckets, okay. So I need to know sports really well to you know really plan sports campaigns for these people. So if I understand that okay, Narain is a scuba diver or a snorkeler or whatever, I will try to you know create a campaign specifically for you. or thousands like you uh, who are into that particular sport in that level of expertise and i will try to sort of you know promote sports to you that is Actually. amazing bro now now this job was where which city were you based in bangalore bangalore so the head office of decathlon india is in bangalore so i'm based in sort of bangalore so it sounds like this organization is really into sports it's not just they're selling sports products but the uh, induction is kind of like uh, you know you're playing a game and everybody's into sports and the culture is of people who really enjoy sports What is the head office like? Is it like a typical office with boxes and cubes? What is the head office uh, like? It's actually very interesting because we have six playgrounds here. Okay. In the head office, you have playgrounds. Yeah, we have playgrounds. So we also have the biggest store of the country here. So it's a store and the office as well. So the reason why they they have done this because they want all the office people also to be very connected to sports on the ground. So the office people also have to go to store and work there once in a while. Okay, like that's a part of the job. So that your you are having like a one on one with the customers directly so that keeps you grounded as well so they have six playgrounds here they have a football ground they have a basketball ground they have a skating rink they have a gym so of course like you know post work you play sports and that was the biggest takeaway that okay no matter how bad your day goes at the end of the day you can just you know play football with your mates and everything like else goes for the toss so and also we don't have cubicles so even the ceo of the company okay for example like the guy who leads the company and all the top management we share the same table okay we don't have cubicles we share the same table we share the same space if you want to do a meeting or if you want to have a one on one with someone 
in the top floor you have lots and lots of rooms you have like 40 50 meeting rooms you can book as per your convenience it's always available and you can do your meetings there but traditionally when you come to work you put your bags down at the same table and everybody like you know works together in the same space wow it's it's again like a sport like in the football game you're all together you're not working in silos you're working together and same here right and if you need some alone time you can go this is really cool i'm impressed with uh, how decathlon is running its stuff no wonder they've become so successful in india all of a sudden how many stores did decathlon have when you joined and right now how many stores do they have about so i joined way back in 2018 april it's been 3 years that time we had around uh, 41 odd stores currently we are like 82 this should have been 82 all over the country this should have been much more since the last year of course the lockdown happened so we didn't really open a lot of new stores but uh, the ideas by the end of next year hopefully we'll have 100 plus stores Hundred plus stores, and each of these stores, these these are huge stores. I mean, how many square feet are these stores? Is it a very expensive affair to open these stores? And uh, so that's the thing. So what they've done is like smartly they have opened these stores which are very far from the city. Okay. Yeah. All the warehouse like stores that you'll see, which has huge playgrounds and play area and stuff like that, they won't be exactly inside the city. So what they do is we open stores outside the city in the outskirts, like twenty kilometers again. It's like you going for a picnic uh, over the weekend, and you know, playing sports and stuff, and you come back with a lot of stuff. Uh, so that's how we start entering a city, and then we go and open smaller stores inside the city, which is more accessible for people. So these stores, like the one you see in Kolkata, also is not the biggest store of the Kathmandu. It's like all small stores because, of course, you know, uh, it's about the cost and business at the end. Uh, but that's how you know they try to penetrate into a city. Like in Kolkata as well, if you remember, the first store in Kolkata was actually forty kilometers away from Kolkata. It was Correct. in Havra. Correct. So that's how the model is. Like they really want people to discover the Kathmandu first, and then really make the sports accessible by coming inside the city. Wow. Prag, what has it been like um, in your personal journey as a sports person? What is some new sport that you discovered? Um, what is some sport that you would recommend the viewers to check out that they've probably never heard of? Um, because you've been playing a bunch of sports and you seem like a sports geek. So, what what is the sport that you discovered and what's something that you recommend us to check out? So again, you know the thing is with sports, it's a very subjective thing. Okay, few people will say cricket is such a boring game. You know, you spend like five days playing a. Game of cricket and what, it might just end up in a draw. So what's the point of doing that? Yeah. But a few fanatics, like of course most of the people in India, they lose their head over test series, right? If it's in India, Australia, India, Pakistan, people lose their head. So again, sports liking is a very subjective thing. But my time in decathlon, I discovered a lot of new sports which I didn't even know about. So traditionally, for example, uh, you will not call mountain sports or hiking, trekking things uh, as a form of sport. For you, it's a leisure activity. Correct. But people do that professionally. People Correct. do road biking, mountain biking professionally. It's a sport for them. So sports like these, like I recently started, or uh, you know, roller sports. So roller sports basically means uh, inline skating, skateboarding, longboarding. So I was always scared about uh, of, of these sports when I was a kid. I was always scared that I'll fall. I'll, yeah. And it's not that fun when you're doing it alone. But Correct. in the Catalan, there are a lot of people who practice these sports because again, it's a part of a portfolio as well, right? So. you won't be able to explain the importance of the sport if you're not practicing it yourself so a lot of people practice these sports so i joined them and in the last couple of months i have picked up a uh, long boarding uh, which is traditionally like you know what you do for commute like the four wheels and it it is a, dif- a bit difficult to pick up at the beginning because it takes time to learn how Correct. to balance uh, then inline skating then there's something called a wave board which has only two wheels and you have to put your foot down so those kind of things so i have been picking those roller sports of late Ooh, skateboarding and longboarding. So I I saw a bunch of these in the US. I was I I've tried it and I've fallen also. I didn't give it too much of a go when I was there because it's more common there. I actually I remember some people going from one class to the other in in the college campus on the longboards. I I remember them and some of them like used to go downhill. Ooh, zoom. Yeah, yeah, it's wow. Very scary. <laughs> very scary. Oh, which has been the most fun for you to pick up? Oh, and what's the secret? Traffic. What's the secret to Of being able to do it successfully. So I mean, to be honest, I'll tell you. When I was working in the store, there was this one person, okay, who came in, who was also as scared as maybe you, me, and you are, would, uh, like, would be uh, even, you know, thinking about a thing like a skateboard. Like, 
when you're especially in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, because it's mostly for kids. Like traditionally, that's how we have seen it. So there was this guy who came inside the store. He was some 40 or plus, and he said, "You know, I've always been really scared of trying skateboarding. I want to try it once." He came to our store, and he broke his hand. He fell down. He broke his hand, and he fractured it. Three months, he was like he couldn't like even use his right hand. But he said that you know what? Now I really want to learn this sport. Like I really wow. want to. He came back after three, three and a half months. He purchased the best skateboard in the in the offering, and uh, he took the classes. And in two months' time, he was a champion. So, you know, so that's the thing about sports. Like you can pick up any sport you want, just that you really want to. You really want to learn the sport in the first place. And the only thing, the only way you can get that desire is once you try it out. And again, that's what Dekan is trying to do. Like you know, you just come to the store and you give it a shot and you see if you're enjoying it because. uh in india if i want to just try mountain biking i can't do it anywhere i can't do skateboarding anywhere nobody gives me that option right so i think that's the idea so you can pick up any sport you want wow and what's a cool sport that you would ask the viewers to check out maybe they don't do it themselves but a sport that you like wow is this actually a sport what i didn't know about this okay so a lot of people might not know but uh i'll talk about water sports so water sports specifically i'll talk about two sports okay one would be snorkeling and one would be surfing okay why i'm talking about these two sports surfing number one because india has really good points you know for surfing like there's a place called puvlam in tamil nadu it is actually a global sport for surfing like you know foreigners came they built that culture there and now people go there to surf the tides are brilliant and the lot of you know 3 4 day coaching classes where you can actually learn surfing bodyboarding and stuff it's a lot of fun like you don't have anything to worry you just put on a life jacket and you start surfing and once you learn to balance yourself you feel like you've achieved a big big thing in your life and it looks so cool right so surfing is one sport i'll genuinely ask people to try because it's very easily available in india as well and number 2 i would talk about snorkeling why snorkeling because i wasn't a good swimmer i could barely swim so the person who heads the water sports uh, vertical in decathlon i spoke to her so she said that you know for snorkeling you don't even need to know how to swim you can do it without learning how to swim yeah you can just put on a life jacket because snorkeling you're not going down the water right you're just staying up on the surface feet. exactly Stay on the surface 2 feet right so you can just give it a shot and you would love to see the you know the the fishes and all the marine uh, coral reefs and stuff like that and i tried that when i was in thailand last year it was a beautiful experience so it's something that you can pick it up very soon very quickly you don't even need to know how to swim but it's something you should genuinely check out well wow, that's awesome bro it reminds me of a surfing story that i went through i recently went to goa a few months ago and uh, i went to go learn surfing and the instructor was from russia so this is a russian dude like really well built and he had um, a friend and she was like giving us instruction but her english was also kind of decent not too well and this guy spoke like he hardly spoke any english right and goa the northern beaches they have a bunch of these russians um who have their own subculture there and they might not even speak english yeah but anyways he was teaching us surfing so what happened was they since the english was a barrier and i couldn't understand the words so well i had to really focus on what he is uh, showing us like you know he was showing us steps one two three you know <laughs> how you get up from the surfboard right. when it's coming and initially i was trying to intel- intellectualize it but slowly i realized okay no no i just got to pay attention so it forced me because i couldn't understand it forced me to pay attention to what he was actually doing and just pick it up and then when we went to surf slowly but surely i started getting up on the board like and he was like oh first time good and i was like it's it's because you didn't know english so well i just had to pay attention to what you were doing and i picked it up kind of <laughs> you're doubting your communication skills that i'm sure i mean if i don't even talk to you you'll understand everything i'm saying so. no that's not true but i i was saying like that that reminded me of you know how like sometimes intellectualizing the sport you know we intellectualize it so much but like just getting on there and pay, seeing how others do and just copy pasting it can give us so much so much uh, so many more results in sport like same with skateboarding probably right intellectualizing will make you fail yeah 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 you just have to like you know, pick it up and give it a shot and in no time you fall in love with it and you probably ace it as well so it's 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 a good escape you know for a lot of people like especially now for example i can't go out and play football because of the lockdown and the pandemic right but i can still go out i can do my skateboarding every day because again i'm doing it all by myself mm. in my society or something like that so you know for a lot of people it's a good time to learn new sports 
you know, you have that key, like half an hour of escape every day. And it really helps, I think. That's awesome. This, so the sports industry internationally is very big. And there's a lot of sports personnel like Messi, Ronaldo, Serena, Williams, Roger Federer, Nadal, all kinds of people. Who's someone that you really look up to? Doesn't have to be a sport that you love, but somebody that you really look up to. And why do you look up to them? Somebody who's so into sports. So I've been following a lot of sports. Okay, I follow NBA, UFC, football. But if I have to like really just uh, be very honest with you, my favorite sports person has been MS Dhoni. Okay, MS Dhoni. Okay. I mean, uh, for those, I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> so he is my favorite sports person for a lot of reasons. I mean, firstly. His background, like where he comes from, he comes from a very humble background. He comes from a place like Rachi, which is traditionally not a very sporty place, right? And he made it to the top. And then you see him bringing his own flavor to the sport. Like, you know, that authenticity has been there throughout his career. Like he will do things that were unheard of, unseen in the sport. He'll do the smart things. He'll start the, over, uh, the innings with a spinner. Like traditionally, nobody... Did that. Everybody used to start the innings with a, with a full pace bowler. And nobody used to question much why. But they used to do it. And they used to change that. And of course, the fact that he has been a champion cricketer for the country. And of course, his humility. Uh, I have been like a big, big fan of his. Also because I used to be a wicket keeper. And probably this is also where it's all coming from. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. MS Dhoni. I, I, I think that's a great choice, personally. I mean, Dhoni is somebody I respect. He was the former Indian um, cricket captain, men's cricket captain, and he's been responsible for the second and only uh, World Cup that India uh, had won. The second World Cup that India had won after a big hiatus, after a big break. So Dhoni, yeah. And what I love about him is exactly what you said. On the field, he's calm as a cucumber. The situation around him can get as intense as anybody wants, but the way he is, he's calm as a cucumber, and I think that's what makes him great. Exactly. It's funny how he does it. Like, you know, you won't even see him uh, being very expressive in public. He won't even do a lot of, you know, public conferences and stuff like that. He won't have a very active social media profile either. But when he's on the pitch, you know, he's the boss. Like, he has his presence. So. Wow. Love I mean, that. So, Parag, I know you've done multiple projects in your career, etc. And you've done one uh, about understanding the behavior of sports fans and business of sports in India. So, I want to talk to you about business of sports in India. Because you have been somebody who likes sports and you've been in the business aspect of it as well. So what is the future of sports in India? How does the business work? Um, tell me all that you know about it in a concise manner so that we can grasp most out of it. Okay. So if I have to bucket sports in India, I will probably do it in three ways. Okay. Number one could be sports retail. The okay. Nike, Adidas, the Catalans of the world. Number two could be sports broadcasting. So sports broadcasting is your Sony sports, your star sports and all those you know, companies broadcasting working, channels, broadcasting channels, television, digitally hot stand stuff like that. That's your bucket number two. And the third one is the biggest bucket. That's a sports marketing slash management bucket. So what they do is they could be they could be doing anything pertaining to sports. So for example, when you see uh, advertisements uh, inside the stadium when you're going for the cricket match, you probably see the side screen advertisements. You probably see the boundary ropes advertisements. So there are a lot of sports companies who are pitching to the brands about this space. So that's how they make money. So for example, uh, when you're watching an IPL game, of course, you'll see a lot of advertisements or sponsors. So how are they connected? So there are a lot of sports marketing companies inside the, inside the country who do that. Reliance, IMG, ESP, Properties, TCM. So they're not really popular because only the people who are in this ecosystem have to you know, work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. But their scope could be managing a sports event, managing sports personnel, uh, it could be uh, bidding for instead their rights, uh, different types of digital rights. It could be anything. Uh, it could be sports analytics. So when you watch a cricket game, you see average, you see strike rate. So what happens? So Star has probably outsourced that to a digital or a marketing data analytics company who is giving you real-time numbers. So there are companies who do all these. So that's the sports marketing management ecosystem as well in the country. But if I have to talk about sports as an industry, it's actually pretty sad because uh, it is worth less than uh, 7,000 crores right now. It dipped further because of lockdown last year. And uh, even this year, our budget for sports went down by 200 crores and it's an Olympics year. So that's pretty sad. But uh, it looks promising right now because this year, again, in Olympics, I really 
have you know high hopes from our from our from our uh, athletes and for sure we should win a lot of medals which will give india good visibility and a you know, global uh, stature so nice yeah nice parag um going into understanding sports business uh, someone who's interested in sports and wants to get into the business aspect of sports in india right now even the global uh, viewers listening what area should they focus on right now in india is it is it sports um, is it a specific sport is it sports leagues uh, where is the opportunity that you see right now in the future of sports in india where can be money made so 87% of sports in india is cricket okay like 87 Seven percent revenue in the sports marketing uh, ecosystem in India comes from cricket, majorly because of IPL and almost every year they have either a T Twenty World Cup or fifty form over format World Cup. What I think could be really interesting right now is working on new sports. So, for example, when you uh, first uh, probably have heard about pro kabaddi, okay, nobody you yeah. really talked about kabaddi that time because nobody took it seriously. Right, it's just something you play for fun. But what Star Sports did, they really made a big deal out of it. They packaged it so well, and all of a sudden, everybody is watching pro kabaddi league on the television. Okay, and it became the second biggest sports property in India, bigger than ISL, bigger than football, bigger than any other sport. Of course, behind cricket, but the second biggest property. So that was a blue ocean they were able to identify. Right now, again, because of lockdown, we see a surgence in esports. A lot of people are talking about you know bot fights and esports and fantasies and things like that. So. Again, cricket is an easy option. You can always, you know, jump into the bandwagon of IPL and uh, BCCI and those kind of bodies, and you can make a quick buck, buck out of it. But that's not fun, right? You would want to go somewhere where nobody has ever been before, and you would want to develop that sport and promote it to people who have probably not even heard of it. That's how pro kabaddi happened. That's how WWE happened. For example, World Wrestling Entertainment. It's not even a sport, but it's been packaged as Sports entertainment, and it has been marketed so well that kids, like you know, on Monday evening they they watch WWE Raw. So I mean, those kind of sports I think can really pick up because they're interesting, they're fun to watch, and again, there is no saturation like cricket. So I think there's a lot of scope there. That's awesome. And for those who want to know what pro kabaddi, kabaddi is this like ancient? I think it's an Indian sport, right? And it's almost yeah. like a team. Uh, res- team sport, but at the same time, like in somewhat wrestling, you guys got to check kabaddi out if you don't uh, know what it is. The beauty of kabaddi is that you don't need any equipment, so yeah. anybody can play it. So the barrier to a lot of sports today is the the fact that you need a proper play area, you need a lot of equipment. For example, cricket, you can't just play without a bat or a ball. You need a lot of people. The beauty about this sport, kabaddi, is that you just need a small space. You don't need any equipment. You just need to learn the rules, and it's very simple. And it is a very strategic game. It is a very tactical game, and it involves a lot of you know strength, speed, and stuff like that. So I think it's something you should learn really each other. Huh. That's awesome. And lastly, Parag, um, I was very fascinated when you said esports, right? Because nowadays I see these people who've never played a sport in their life, never moved their asses, but they're so into football and FIFA. on yeah. their ps4 ps5 xbox uh, and esports is becoming this whole thing where there are champions of fifa online in this whole digitally native world and advertisement agencies are going and they're actually placing banners and and these uh, companies these gaming companies are selling rights to banners in the digital world yeah. what is happening what do you think about this i mean traditionally i'm not a very big fan of esports because like now you know my uh, background right so i believe in offline sports more but esports is the biggest thing right now because uh, it's not just about them placing banners you know uh, like uh, companies like red bull for example or nvidia they own sports teams they have their own sports clubs and you know they train all the upcoming candidates who can have a future in esports they have an entire event around it so i mean it's big the entire space is big and the beauty of this is that you don't have to be from america or in other top countries of the world to be a part of this you know uh, wave you can just be in india you can be from a tier 2 uh, place and you could be very very good at first person shooting game you could be a boss at pubg or any other game right or any other multiplayer strategy games and you could really make it big so it has just reduced that barrier to another extent and everybody can be a part of it 
there are YouTubers who are streaming it day in day out, and people are watching them play, and they're placing an advertisement in the middle. So I think in India we're still in that phase where people need to get used to esports, and once esports become a habit, then you will see a lot of brands jumping into the bandwagon. Wow, Parag, what a solid conversation! We learned about your sports, your journey, um, sports marketing, and then we got into the opportunities that lie in the sport industry in India. Anything that you would like to say finally to conclude? No, I mean I'll just say that uh, you know if you are a sports fan, if you want sports in India to really grow, then uh, I mean you should not. I mean not just contribute in the way that you're watching sports or something like that. But even if you see there's a small sport event that happens in your society, in your locality, or somebody's trying to play hockey or uh, some of these unconventional sports, even if it's happening in your neighborhood, I mean just go there, be present for ten, fifteen minutes, and. Talk about it. The more you talk about it, the more visibility these sports get. And you know, if we want to become a sporting superpower globally, uh, then it has to start from the grassroots. It has to start from there. Cricket has been able to do that really well. We have cricket clubs everywhere in the country, but for other sports, we are not really there right now. But uh, I think the future looks good. And if you can support by even just you know being present or being you know active in the sports coming to talk about sports. uh it can really go a long long way in promoting the sports in our country that's awesome bro awesome parag anything else that you want to say um at last yeah so actually one thing i really wanted to tell you narin so you know we were of course good friends uh, when we were in school till 2013 i think it's been eight years since that and uh, of course on our birthdays uh, we used to call, uh, on each other's birthday we used to call each other and this continued for the first couple of years with everyone and then of course you know as time passes you stop physically meeting these people you don't expect or maybe just once in a while whatsapp messages or dms but with you i was blessed that you know never in the last eight years you missed my birthday you used to call me every every single time and now it has come to a point that i expect your calls okay and this is nothing that i've really learned from you i have adapted this and i'm on facebook only because i want to keep a track of everybody's birthday like that's the only reason why i go to facebook every night i go there i check whose birthday is it tomorrow i'll make a point to call Maybe once a year, but it goes a really long way in just maintaining that, you know, connect with with my friends, with my old friends, and I've really learned that from you. So, oh, I mean, thank you, man. This is so kind of you. Uh, yeah, I hope others who have not done that with don't feel bad after hearing this, <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's, I've not done that with everybody. But like, I think some people. I mean, that's I that. So he only does that with me, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it, it it feels amazing when you talk to your friends on their birthdays. You know, it's for like two minutes. Yeah, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Parag, thank you so much for joining us for the show today. What a great conversation! It was amazing talking to you. Cheers, man. I hope to see you soon, and I hope to play with you soon. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot for having me here. It was a great exchange, and thanks for making me a part of this journey. Thank you.